Hey guys, welcome back. So today we will be solving our very first non-homogeneous differential equation. And the way that we're gonna do it is by using one of the methods that we're gonna be studying, which is called undetermined coefficients. So I figured that the best way to go about this is to jump straight into an example and basically just introduce the idea as we work through it. And this isn't really going to be just a single video thing. Uh, this is probably gonna take two or three videos on just undetermined coefficients, just so I can be sure to go over every possible thing that you guys might encounter in class for um, a non-homogeneous problem that can be solved using undetermined coefficients. So anyway, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So recall from the previous video that the way we solve non-homogeneous problems is first we find the homogeneous solution and then we find a particular solution and we add them together and we take that as our general solution. So the very first step is always to find the homogeneous solution. So to do that, this is pretty much exactly what we have been doing for the past several videos. Instead of having t squared plus 2t plus 5, I'm just going to put 0. And we are pros at solving this now, so let's just go ahead straight into the characteristic equation and this factors beautifully so let's see we have a minus one right here and a plus one right there so we have real roots negative one half and one which means that the general form for our homogeneous solution yh is equal to c1 times e to the negative one half t plus c2 e to the t so that is step one finding the homogeneous solution so next we move on to step two, which is determining the form of our particular solution. So the way that we do that with undetermined coefficients is we take a look at the forcing function or whatever is on the right side of the differential equation. So if we start from t squared plus 2t plus 5 and we differentiate this, we get 2t plus 2. And then we can differentiate that and we get just 2. And then after that, as we continually differentiate, we just get zeros. So the way that we choose the form of our particular solution is by looking at all the different types of terms that show up in all these different derivatives. So for example, we have a t squared, we have a t, and then we have constants. Those are the only forms that show up in all these different terms of all the derivatives. So we're gonna express that as yp is equal to a t squared term with an undetermined coefficient on it a t term with an undetermined coefficient on it, and then a constant term. So the goal is to pick a particular equation that can represent every single possible term that shows up in this list right here. And we can see that all the terms in this particular solution form can represent all of the terms here in this list. So that is the way that we are going to determine how to choose our particular solution. So in general, for a polynomial of n degree, then we assume a particular solution of a t to the n plus b t to the n minus 1 plus c t n minus 2 and so on and so on. So in this case we had a second degree polynomial so that's why we had a t squared plus b t plus c. And basically what this process does is that it ensures that once we differentiate y p and we throw it back into our differential equation that we aren't introducing any new forms that could exist right here because what this represents is like a summation. And if we introduce any other function type or shape or whatever, then that's gonna show up here and there's no way that we can get an inequality. So anyway, that's how we go about finding the particular solution form. And don't worry, I know this is a lot of information. And in the next video, we will look at other examples uh, to ensure that you guys do understand and know how to um, basically determine the particular solution form. So step number three is actually determining the undetermined coefficients. So we have our particular solution form, and what we're gonna do is we're, we are going to differentiate it twice and throw it back into our differential equations and then solve for a, b, and c. So really this is no different than how we did the constant coefficient in Euler's equation. Um, over there, we what we did was we assumed you know, t to the r or e to the rt, and, we, um, and that was our solution form and then we differentiated it and solved for r. So really this is just the same idea. So anyway, let's go ahead and write this down. So yp is at squared plus bt plus c. yp prime, let's go ahead and differentiate this, 2at plus b. And then yp double prime 
is just two times a. And let's take all that and let's throw it into our different equation. So we have, um, we're, we are going to substitute it into this differential equation. And notice that I'm actually using the full equation, not the homogeneous part. I'm including this t squared plus 2t plus 5. So let's do our substitution. Minus yp prime, which is minus 2at minus b. And then minus at squared minus bt minus c. And all that has to equal the right hand side. So we have minus at squared. And now let's get the t's. So we have a minus 2at minus bt. So I'm going to write that as minus 2a plus b times t. And now let's get the constants. So we have a plus 4a minus b and minus c. So plus 4a minus b minus c. And all this equals t squared plus 2t plus 5. And all right, we are finally ready to solve for a, b, and c. And the way that we're going to do that is we just take the coefficients on the t squared and we set them equal to each other. So negative a is equal to 1. And then we take the coefficient on the t and equate them. So we have negative 2a plus b is equal to 2. And then we take the constant and set it equal to each other. So we get 4a minus b minus c is equal to 5. So this gives us a is equal to negative 1. And then we can substitute that into our second equation. And this gives us b is equal to 0. And then we can take this and substitute it into this equation. So we have negative 4 minus c is equal to 5. So c is equal to negative 9. So this gives us our particular solution. And that is yp is equal to 8t squared, but a is negative 1, so negative t squared and then plus zero times t, and then minus nine. So this is our particular solution. And now we have both of the components of our general solution. So let's go ahead and write that out. So y is equal to the homogeneous, which is c1 e to the negative one half t, plus c2 e to the t, and then plus our particular, so minus t squared minus nine. This is our final answer. Okay, so one of the last things that I want to stress is the importance of calculating the homogeneous equation first. And a big reason why that's important is because our particular solution form that we assume, all the terms in this particular solution form must be linearly independent with the terms in this homogeneous solution. If any of the terms in this particular solution that we assume are linearly dependent with, so if they are multiples of y1 or y2 in our homogeneous solution, then there's something that we have to do. So in this example, we were okay, but I just wanted to point that out because it will show up in a later video that I will go over. So what's a good habit to get into to make sure that the particular solution that you assume is linearly independent between all of the terms with the homogeneous solution. So linearly independent. Okay, I just wanted to say that so you guys can keep an eye out. And the other thing that I wanted to say is that undetermined coefficients definitely does not work for every single non-homogeneous problem. In fact, it only works for a very, very small subset of uh, right-hand side forcing functions, I guess we can call them. And that's a direct consequence of this rule right here that says that the number of forms of derivatives has to be finite. And again, we will investigate that a little more and we will be sure to go over the most common cases where you will use undetermined coefficients. Otherwise, you will have to use something else called variations of parameters, which we will touch on after we are done with undetermined coefficients. So for example, if this right-hand side was like t to the negative squared, if I were to continuously take derivatives of that, I would get t to the negative squared, negative two t to the negative three, and then six t negative four, and so on and so on. And this power will just keep on going down and I do not have a finite number of derivative forms. So basically what that causes is whenever I differentiate it twice, I will have a different form on the left-hand side than I will have on the right-hand side. 
and that'll make this equality impossible. So that's a situation where we have to use that other method that I talked about. But anyway, for now, let's just focus on undetermined coefficients. I just kind of wanted to throw a bunch of information at you to get you thinking. So I know this was all a lot, but we will visit many other examples. And if you guys have any questions or concerns or whatever, just let me know in the comments and I will make sure to clear everything up. So thanks for watching and see you guys later.